Hello, all of you vain, gloriously wonderful people. This is the Ocelot Jugular, and I'm about to find out if it'll off-road. You can vote for the vehicles that you want to see in upcoming Will It Off-Road videos by clicking on the link in the description down below. And we have a comment from Sparing Donkey. Thanks, man. I, I really appreciate it. Especially that first sentence there. I feel like nobody does what you do like you do. Ah, sweet music to my ears as Trevor runs over a hiker. So, um, yeah, speaking of voting, uh, next week we will have uh, a video that features some cars that were voted for early this summer. Um, like way back in like mid-July, uh, before the DLC chopped, uh, and uh, yeah. I had it recorded, ready to go, and the DLC came out. So we did unreleased vehicles for a while. Um, but we will be getting back to voting uh, for the next two weeks. Then we'll go to an unreleased vehicle. Then we'll do one more unreleased. Then a voted. Then one last unreleased video. And then finally we'll just get back to voting. Um, that takes us into November, if you were counting just then. Uh, and so, yeah, make sure you do go vote for the vehicles that you want to see featured. We've had a lot of fun. Uh, in Discord the past few weeks, uh, recording the ones that you'll see uh, starting next week, because uh, we'll go into it, and I'll I'll kind of give like an hour notice, hey, we're going to record Bullet Off-Road in an hour, anybody who wants to be in the video, come hang out, and uh, I'll tell them what cars we're going to be recording for the day, and... A handful of people may decide they want to do other cars in the video, and spam a lot of votes, and I do mean a lot. Um, so you can be a part of that. You don't even have to join Discord, but hey, love to have you in our Discord community. The link is in the description down below. And while we're talking about links down below, also play Will It Off-Road Bingo. Uh, you, click you click the link, click Generate Card, and then you just tap or click on a square when something happens in the video, and uh, yeah, be pretty good. So the jugular. If you were playing off-road bingo, you may have just got the point because that just went over two minutes. I love the jugular. I absolutely adore this car. I cannot wait for it to be released. Um, obviously, I used uh, single-player PC mods to record this uh, way back when. I, I, I don't know, weeks ago I recorded it, so I don't even remember what the drive was like, honestly. I'm kind of watching it as if I, I a, a new experience here. Bit of a struggle here on this little end bit, and that's kind of disappointing because it was doing really well right up until that. Not a whole lot of issues at all, but it is finally up. Two minutes, 43 seconds, so will it off-road? Yeah, I'd say it will. Uh, and fairly well, actually. That makes it uh, seventh in sports. Slots it right between the LG Retro Custom and the Tropos Rally, so... Pretty good company to be in. Uh, makes it 22nd overall, so just missing out on that top 20. Um, actually, it'd be 21st if we don't count the buzzard. Uh, so that makes it even closer to just missing out on that top 20. And I don't really count the buzzard. I mean, it's in the list, but I don't, I don't really consider it because it's not a land vehicle. But man, this regular, it's just a good car. I mean, it's a lot of fun to drive. Uh, it can be a handful to, if you drive it at speed, so you do have to be careful, but you can get it right up near that limit with a lot of ease. It kind of reminds me of the next vehicle uh, in the video, in fact, because of that. But as you can see, not quite as forgiving as the next vehicle in the video. We've already lost our hood because it did roll over on me, and that's one of the things this car does uh, want to do. You'll see a lot of times going around the corners that it'll pick a wheel up off the ground as we go around the corner. Uh, that tends to be behavior you really only see uh, on off-roading situations. It doesn't really do that down in uh, Trevor. It doesn't really do that down on the asphalt. So uh, Trevor's taking out all the coyotes today. Man, brutal. Who knew Trevor has no respect for life? But... Um, there we go. That's who we're supposed to take out. Hikers. The hikers are supposed to go. They're on Vainglorious Mountain, and they don't need to be there. That's what uh, Mount Chiliad means in some language. It means Vainglorious, I assure you. Don't look it up. Don't check me on that. Just trust me. Um, 
Yeah, but this is a fantastic car. I love the noises it makes. I mostly like the way it looks. I wish you could uh, de-emphasize the bolt-on arches a little bit. I don't mind that they're flared arches. I just don't like the fact that you see the bolts. I, I wish there was an option uh, to kind of tone that down a little bit. Maybe just smooth them out. Because, you know, it's fine. Give it the, the fender flares. No big deal. Almost. Oh, I did hit the tree. Um, but I would like to be able to get rid of the, the bolts on it. I just think it would really fit with the car a lot better. Especially because it has a really nice interior and everything. So there's... I don't know. To me, it seems kind of silly to have such a, a race car inspired element. Granted, you can make this look like a race car. Should you really desire. Of course, there's Park Ranger that we saw... In previous videos, once again in the way, we're down for our controlled descent. Two minutes, 34 seconds. So we're going to go back to the top of Mount Chiliad. Throw this little kitty cat off the side of the mountain. Kitty cat, really random. And uh, see what's what in terms of damage here. So, pretty composed. But then it just barely tips and it's kind of all over after that. Yes, Trevor, I agree. Um... And I agree with that as well. I think the two statements go hand in hand together. Um, but we won't get into that in this video. Oh, a little bit of an engine rattle already. That's that's not good. Of course, I tried to be quiet so you could hear the engine rattle, and then the engine didn't rattle because it was uh, too high in the air. But, um, yeah, the engine is rattling, so if you can't hear it, maybe put on some headphones or just... Again, trust me, it is. So... You know, a car with 100% uh, armor, you would think it'd take a few more bangs before uh, it would start getting an engine rattle, but I guess not. It doesn't really seem to be impacting performance. Then again, I can't really get too much speed to find out for sure. I mean, you gotta admit, the car's doing pretty good uh, in the dirt here. It is all-wheel drive, if I remember right. Um, and it has a lot of grip, so it does fairly well. I don't remember how it does down in this bumpy muddy part here. It, it hits some barricade is what it does. Or a trellis? Would that be a trellis? I never know what to call that thing. Uh, it's a bridge, but what's the under part of the bridge? I don't know. But uh, anyway, coming down to the last little bit, right into the wood pile. Nice little roll there. And we are down. One minute, 38 seconds. Let's take a look at the damage on the jugular. So headlights, one taillight, two windows are gone. The hood, the driver's doors, gone. Other doors won't close. Bent wheels, slight body damage, and engine damage. And of course, that is going to bring us to our next vehicle. Oh, I am so in love with this car. The Benefactor Krieger, or Krieger, if that's what you prefer, but it's Krieger. Uh, fun fact, German means warrior. Had a bit of trouble lining it up on the start line here. I couldn't get the right angle. Uh, but finally got it sorted out. And then almost drove off without remembering to do my little rev thing. And we're off. And Thomas, don't even worry about it, man. Um, to be fair, you know, I do come down on the other side of that entrance. So uh, don't don't even don't even worry about it. I know it takes a lot of time to get to rank 1500 in GTA. So, yeah. Granted, I would expect you would know the map a little bit. But, hey, I'll give you a little fun fact. And you may not have noticed this. Go to that sign out here in the Polito Forest, right outside of that wood mill. There's a saw blade cutting it in half. And I did, I've did. i done... Uh, well, this is Willard Off-Road 118, but I've done more than that if you count the ones in the snow, plus some that I've already got recorded. Um, and I would say it was probably around, I don't know, the 100th video that I finally noticed that saw sticking through the wood sign or the sawmill. Never even saw it before, H despite having spent literally dozens of hours sitting right next to it, waiting on the sun to come up to record Will and Off-Road. Yeah, so don't feel too bad that uh, you didn't notice that we were in there. If you think that Rocket and Sven are back there having a grudge match, they're not. Sven just fell out of the back of Rocket's 6x6, and uh, that was that. Quite an interesting combination of vehicles. I don't know if you caught it there as we came through. We had the Dubsta 6x6. Uh, there is an Obey Drafter. Then there was the Benefactor Terror Bite, which 
uh, is the guy with the bounty down there in yellow. You may notice he's really far behind. That's Commander Hobo. And then we have uh, Raven, or um, as we sometimes refer to him, the better Brandon. Um, he, he did a really cool uh, bootleg version of Bullet Off-Road called Will Planes Off-Road, where he took three planes up and down the mountain. It was quite entertaining. I don't know if they ever put it on YouTube or not, though. It was a live stream on Twitch that he did, which you could have been notified uh, if you were part of our Discord channel, because anybody who is a streamer and wants to have it set up this way, I will gladly set it up to notify uh, our live streaming channel that, hey, I've gone live and you can go watch. It's not just me that it notifies about. We've got four or five other people that it, it'll give you notification that they've gone live on Twitch. Sadly, it only works for Twitch live streams uh, and not any other live streaming service. But we are up in the Krieger. Two minutes, 38 seconds. So will it off-road? Yeah. And actually, pretty drama-free. I mean, it bounced around a little bit. And this car is not a bouncy car on the pavement by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it was more that, you know, it's just a lot of really rough terrain. But anyways, that's Raven in his Strike Force. Actually, I think it might be Sven's Strike Force. I'm not sure. Um, but, uh, yeah. It, it was just kind of fun to have a plane flying over, just doing random shots. You'll actually, during the damage descent, get to see him pull off a pretty cool stunt if you're watching closely. So back to the Krieger. I love this car. I mean... This is a car that I've wanted for a long time. Not necessarily the way it looks or anything, though I do like the way it looks. Um, but the way it drives, it is an incredibly easy car to drive at speed. And the reason I've wanted that for a long time is because a lot of the cars that we get uh, tend to present different challenges in one way or another, especially the really fast ones. And you know, this is what, the second fastest supercar? And it's so close to the Emirates that they may as well be tied. And you know, normally with these type of speeds, you have trade-offs, you have things you have to watch out for that you have to be careful with. But really the Krieger is just easy to drive. And some of you may not be aware, but for several years I uh, did a lot of amateur racing and the the race club I was part of had a lot of very um, uh, a lot was full of a lot of people who had more money than brains. So they owned a lot of just stupid, crazy, insane supercars and hypercars. And you know they were car guys, and they liked to share their love for cars. There's Commander. It's about all the farther he made it up the mountain. Um, so I've driven a lot of really exotic cars. I've been very grateful. Things I would never ever be able to afford if I saved my whole life for. Um, and a lot of them are just real easy to drive at speed around the track. Uh, not all of them. Some of them do want to kill you, you know, looking at you, Lamborghini. Um, but so many modern hypercars and supercars with all their electronic nannies, you leave it turned on, you can get a great lap time and still not nearly be murdered. So... That's why I'm glad to see the Krieger. It reminds me of a lot of cars I've driven in real life. I know I took a long time to explain that. But it is just, I just can't say enough about the, how much I enjoy driving this car. And we are down two minutes, 29 seconds. So we'll go back up to the top of Mount Chiliad, where we won't necessarily get to drive it at speed, but we will get Commander being shot at by uh, the Strike Force. Commander didn't want to drive back up, so he stole the dumpster. Lifted it up, and he's dropped it now. Um, he was hoping to hit me with it midair. It is behind me, and you will see it. Don't worry. Uh, the the uh, unmanned or unpiloted, the driverless. There we go. There we go. The driverless Stubsta will come up. However, that's Finn in Rockets 6x6. Six six. Things went very wrong with something they were trying, so Rockets not actually in the car. But uh, so coming up to a little bit of trouble here. Managed to land on my roof between this tree and this boulder and can't really roll over because of it. And I thought we were going to get a DNF on our damage descent, but nope. There's Commander's driverless Stubsta. Hit me just enough. I was finally able to wiggle the back end loose and got out. So totally unplanned, but still pretty impressive. But it is now wedged against the tree. 
I should have given a little nudge just to see how far down it would finally get. I think he's done this once before and the car actually got really far. Uh, whatever it was he dropped, I don't remember. But uh, he was waiting on it to explode. I think he wanted to pick it back up and uh, yeah, didn't go so well. He hit a tree and went kaboom. Rocket's busy trying to jump down the mountain. That's why he keeps dying. But uh, it's, just, it's pretty much me and Sven that are driving down this. Uh, though you will get to see, pay attention, top right corner of your screen. Yes, well done. However, he does not continue that luck. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, pretty much at this point, everybody but me has died. Well, and Sven. Sven hasn't died. Um, everybody else has had a problem during this damage descent. But, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. Of course, Finn died going up the mountain, so I guess we can count that as well. But we are finally down with the Krieger. Two minutes, two seconds, almost three seconds. So let's take a look at the damage, which is not a lot. Uh, the headlight's gone. There's a taillight out. There's a teeny tiny amount of body damage, and the wheels are a little bent. Not even a broken window. It's kind of freaky. There's the one vehicle that did make it down, Rocket 6x6. And we'll take a look at that from the back as well. And that is going to do it for this episode of Will It Off-Road. Don't forget to go vote for those vehicles that you want to see featured in upcoming Will It Off-Road videos. And until next time, I'm Brandon, reminding you to stay vainglorious.